Welcome, my name is Julio, I'm the CEO at Arpeggio. Today I would like to demonstrate our advanced geodata science platform. Geodata science differs from traditional data science in a few aspects. First, the data sets can always be decomposed into a set of features, numeric and textual values usually, and a special feature called geometry which is not considered by traditional data science platforms. Geodata scientists are often interested in applying functions to both these components, the features and the geometry, and visualization is ubiquitous. To illustrate what this geodata science platform can do, I will start here with an example in the oil and gas industry. In the oil and gas industry, the volume of oil in place is a global estimate of the volume of oil trapped in the subsurface. You can define this volume of oil in place as an integral over the volume of the reservoir of the saturation of oil times the porosity times this infinitesimal volume element. You can convert this volume into mass by multiplying the integrand by the density of oil. And then we'll call this variable here the mass of oil in place. In the industry, it's common practice to get quick estimates of this oil in place for a reservoir by using average values of density, saturation, and porosity, and multiplying these average values by the total volume of the reservoir. Can we do any better? How can we actually approximate the mass of oil in place over a 3D unstructured mesh? Here we will use the NORN dataset as a benchmark case to illustrate what this geodata science platform can do. For more information, please check the OPM project. Here we load the dataset from disk with this load step function, and then this dataset is spatial and is also temporal, so we'll be passing the specific time step to load here. After loading this geospatial dataset, we can then pass this dataset into a select operation, which takes the specific features that we are interested in using in these calculations and renames them to more readable names. So this geo dataset, as you see, has features that are domain specific and has a special column here, the geometry with hexahedron geometries. It's easy to calculate the mass of oil in place for each of these hexahedrons. And that's done by calling the transform function. So we can transform our reservoir, which is the geospatial data set we have loaded, and define a new feature, which is going to be the column of existing features, density, oil saturation, and porosity, and multiply by the volume of the geometry. This volume function here is a function that's provided by the geodata science platform to convert any geometry into a measure, a volume. This transform function then constructs a new geospatial data set, which has a new feature, the MOIP, which has been computed for each of these hexahedron elements. In order to assess this data set, we can directly plot it, right? So we have this geospatial data set that was obtained with the transform function, and then we can plot the mass of oil in place for each of these hexahedrons. So if you look at this NORN data set, this oil reservoir, you see that most of the oil is trapped here at the bottom of the reservoir. We can sum this mass of oil in place and then obtain the total mass of oil in place in the reservoir and this is giving us the mass in kilograms. As you can see, it's very easy to manipulate geospatial data sets after they are loaded on this platform, and you can easily visualize with one single line uh, this data set. We can perform more advanced analytics. So for example, suppose that we are interested in computing the mass of oil in place the mass of gas in place and the mass of water in place as a function of time. We define this function that takes a time step, loads our reservoir for that time step, 
calculate these three new features with the syntax we have just demonstrated and then returns the summation of this calculated mass of oil, gas and water in place. We define a set of time steps to perform this calculation and then we compute this function on every time step to produce a data frame. As you can see, I'm loading here many uh, time steps of this large 3D unstructured mesh and this computation took 13 seconds. I have now the time series of mass of oil in place, gas in place and water in place. It's very easy to take this data frame and plot the time series and as you can see the mass of water in place is increasing with time because there's water injection in this field and the mass of oil in place and gas in place are also shown here in these other colors. As a second example, consider geographic calculations. This high level interface that we have in our geodata science platform is particularly useful with 2D geographic maps. Here we'll be loading the geometries of the Brazil states. So here we are interested in doing a geodata science workflow to compute the area and perimeter of the states. We load the data set and then select the variable name one and rename it to the state, which is the name of the, the states in Brazil. The geometries here are a bit more evolved than the other ones we've seen before, but then we can the same way easily construct uh, new features. So here we call the transform function on this geospatial data set and it create two new features, the area of the geometry and the perimeter of the geometry, which is just the length of the boundary of the geometry. As you can see, I have two new columns to my geospatial data set, the area and the perimeter, and then I can, for example, plot this features over the map. So as before, we plot the geospatial data set and choose the area feature. As any other visualization we have uh, seen so far, it's interactive and you can then zoom in and zoom out to investigate these features. A more advanced uh, workflow would consist of the split apply combined pattern in data science. Here we have a geospatial split apply combine. The task that we are trying to address is compute this average perimeter of counties per state. So we have again our Brazilian map loaded now at depth 2 to get the county information where we select and rename the columns accordingly and then we want to perform the split apply combine. First we'll take this geospatial data set and feed into a sequence of functions from our geodata science platform. First, we'll group this geospatial data set by the state feature. Then we'll transform the groups by the perimeter function. And finally, we'll combine the results with the mean perimeter. This creates a new geospatial data set with the states, and the average perimeter of counties within that state. Notice that the combined operation produces a new column of geometries with the centroid of the bounding box of each subdomain of the geospatial partition that was created in this split apply combine. We can easily, easily visualize these perimeters as before and see that the average perimeter for the Amazon state here is one of the largest and they are all plotted in the centroid of the bounding boxes of the states. It's easy to see that the geodata science is fun with geostats.jl or our geodata science platform, especially if you start using the group by transform and combine functions. If the geospatial data is not ready to be used with the split apply combine pattern, it can be easily transformed with the table transforms.jl package. Contact us at contact at rpgeo.tech for more information. We can customize our geodata science platform to your business. It will be fast and powerful for your large geospatial data sets. 
your data science team can be much more productive and effective instead of using traditional data science platforms that do not consider geospatial data.